Es ist die Forderung erhoben worden, dass Syrien seine Chemiewaffen vernichtet, dazu bereit ist und Syrien... That was Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, demanding that Syria destroy its chemical weapons, which is interesting because Germany sold chemicals to Syria, which could have been used to create chemical weapons. They sold more than 174,000 euros worth between 2002 and 2006. And the German government say it was under an international law that they are dual use chemicals. That means they could be used for civilian things like making toothpaste, or they could be used to make things like sarin. And Britain too were caught out. They were also selling sodium fluoride to Syria between 2004 and 2010. Again, it can be used to make sarin gas. They were selling it at a time when it was well understood that Syria have an active chemical weapons program. But hey, maybe they were just making toothpaste. Now, after the UN has confirmed sarin gas has been used in the Syrian conflict, Germany and the UK and the United States are demanding the weapons that they may have assisted in creating be destroyed. It's worth noting that Angela Merkel said that according to all the information available to her, they were used for civilian purposes. But it would be nice to see all of that available information. It's reminiscent of when America armed a guy called Saddam Hussein to the teeth only to invade when he stopped playing ball. You know he armed Iraq. I, I wondered about that too, you know. During the Persian Gulf War, those intelligence reports would come out. Iraq, incredible weapons, incredible weapons. How do you know that? Well... <laughs> we looked at the receipt. <laughs> or maybe it's a little like that time when the then Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld, allowed the United States to export pathogenic, toxigenic and other biological research materials to Saddam Hussein during a time when he was known to be gassing the Iranians during the Iran-Iraq war. According to the Regal report published in 1994, those chemical weapons may well have been used against America's own military servicemen during the first Gulf War. I guess what I'm saying is, if we don't want people to have nasty weapons, maybe we should stop selling them. It seems Google isn't content with its current projects such as web browsing, smartphone tech, driverless cars and balloon-powered internet access. The search giant has decided it will now take on death itself. No biggie then. Sure Apple bought out a new iPhone last week, Google's reply, we're going to work out how to make people live longer. Checkmate. They're starting a new venture called Calico and it will focus entirely on health, ageing and extending life. The plan is to use masses of data to figure out what will really extend human lives. What they'll do after that is a bit of a mystery. It will definitely be interesting to see where this latest balls to the wall project takes them. Here's Sam. Online advertising is a pretty dubious world and ads on Facebook can be particularly bizarre. But whilst most can be laughed off, sometimes they really do get it pretty wrong. This is 17-year-old Retair Parsons, and she committed suicide in April after photos leaked of her being raped at a party by a group of men. Following the incident, she was apparently relentlessly targeted by trolls and sex pests online. Two men have since appeared in court charged with child pornography offences. A truly tragic story, but thanks to some bizarre photo scraping, not the end of the ordeal for her family because, check this out, her face has now become the face of a Canadian dating site, iwantchat.com, which is possibly one of the most inappropriate things I personally have ever seen. The ad was immediately removed from the site after it was reported, and Facebook has apologised to the family, who are understandably pretty disgusted by the whole thing. The website is currently offline. Not really surprised. Now here's Laura. Over the past few days, a clown has been terrorising residents in the town of Northampton in the UK by simply appearing on streets and standing there. 
The Northampton clown has become so famous that there's now a Facebook group with over 100,000 likes to track his movements. And if the photos posted there are anything to go by, he seems to prefer appearing after dark. And terrifyingly, he bears a striking resemblance to this clown. <laughs> What's the matter? One balloon, not enough. Try on. People have been so scared of the clown that he's even prompted another figure to take to the streets of Northampton, the clown catcher. Apparently, the clown has now got in touch with the Northampton Chronicle and Echo newspaper and said he could understand why people were scared of him, but that he just wanted to amuse people. Sure. And lastly, thanks to some ingenious person, we now know what flying looks like to an eagle. Check this out. 